Perek Shvur Shtayim Daf Dalid, sponsored the Rufur Shlema for Yonah bin Yamin ben Devoro Chava. The Gemara previously established that all cases of Shtayim Shein Arba must be symmetrical. Just as all the cases of Maris Nagayim teach liability, not some Lechiv and not some Liftor, the same applies to the other cases. This works according to Rabbi Shmuel for all the cases deliberately violated, punishable by lashes. The case of Maris Nagayim is where he cuts off a Baharis. For Shabbos, the Azhara is komalacha loisasu. However, liability is court ex- execution, not lashes. Rabbi Shmuel holds kol Azhara nitan Azharis misas bezdin lokin alone. A Shabbos desecrator warned improperly, suffer the penalty of lashes, receives lashes. Question. The Gemara seems to indicate the Mishnah would follow the opinion of Rabbi, Rabbi Akiva if not for the previous law. Rabbi Akiva would not administer lashes for a mistaken warning. However, the Gemara established earlier the Mishnah is not Rabbi Akiva because one is not liable to a sacrifice when aware of being Tameh but unaware of being in the temple or eating sacrificial food. The answer. Rabbi Akiva could explain the Mishnah like Rabbi Shmuel. He would then be the preferred author based on Stam Mishnah Rabbi Meir, a student of Rabbi Akiva. The Gemara rejects ex- explaining the laws of Tumah in our Mishnah referring to an intentional violation. Number one. Yediyas Satuma would have to be read, Yediyas Hasro Satuma, knowledge means being warned not to violate the laws of Tuma. Number two, the Mishnah's language indicates it is dealing with four cases, not two. Lashes would involve only two cases, entering the temple or eating sacrificial food in the state of Tuma. Number three, the Mishnah discusses cases of Yediyah and Halama, awareness and lack of awareness. The Gemara reverts to his, its initial understanding. The Mishnah discusses inadvertent violations, its authorship divided and explained. It follows Rabbi Shmuel that one is liable to a carbon olive yored for cases aware of being tame, but unaware of being in the temple or consuming sacrificial food. It follows the opinion of Rabbi Akiva for oaths of past actions, one is liable to a carbon olive yored. Rav Kahana proves this is Rabbi's opinion. Abraisa asks for the source that a tumma violation must be Yediyah Bitchila Yediyah Vesof Helen Ben Osayim. Rabbi Akiva derives it from V'nelam stated twice. V'nelam v'hu tamei v'oshem. The second verse states, V'nelam imenu v'hu yada v'oshem. The verse, verse Nelam teaches he must be unaware of his state of Tumah to bring a sacrifice. However, the second V'nelam v'hu yada cannot add his subsequent awareness is required. That is self-evident. Without it, he could not bring his sacrifice. Therefore, Rabbi Akiva holds, the term v'hu yada must be inserted. Read before V'nelam, teaching one must be aware of his state of Tumah initially, subsequently forgets and enters the temple or eats sacrificial food. There is no other superfluous term to include a case of him being aware of his Tumah, but lacking awareness, he is in the temple or eating sacrificial food. Rebbe explains v'hu yada is not necessary to derive there must be an initial awareness. It is understood from the word V'nelam. The Gemara explains later the verse should otherwise have stated v'hi aluma mimenu, indicating clearly no prior knowledge. Therefore, unlike Rabbi Akiva, who holds the initial awareness is derived from the second Vanellam, Rabbi holds it refers to an awareness of the temple and sacrificial food. Rav Kahana deduces logically his opinion regarding Shavuos is like Rabbi Akiva. They both expound, expound a ribu miut ribui. Any verse that begins with a generalization followed by a specification, followed by another generalization, can be expounded by two hermeneutical rules, prat, Uklal prat uklal and ribu miyad for ribu. O nishba kisishava, one who swears a generalization referring to any form of an oath, lahara lahetiv to do bad or good, a specific oath whose fulfillment depends on the future, lechol asher yevatei ha'adam bishvua, reverting again to a generalization. Rabbi Akiva adopts the ribu miyad method of exposition that includes oaths of past actions excludes only oaths already taken. Rebbe also adopts this form of exposition, a proof. He holds one can redeem a firstborn with everything except a loan document. He expounds its verse as a ribui miyot ribui. Ubduya biben chodesh, it's an amplification indicating anything of value can be used. Be'erkech ha'kesef, chamesh shkolem, a limitation to five shekels. Tifta, another amplification. The Rabbanon expound the cloud, prat and cloud, expand the cloud to include anything movable with intrinsic value, excluding land, slaves, and documents, whereas Rebbe includes everything except loan documents that have no intrinsic value. Question. Although concerning Pidyon Aben, it appears he adopts the method of Ribu Yomiyot regarding the law of what instrument an owner of a Hebrew servant can use to bore his ear and enslave him until Yobel expounds a cloud, prat to cloud. 
The verse states, a generalization that includes anything that can be taken in hand, Marzea, a specification that limits it to an all, Venasata Vazno, a generalization extending it to metal instruments excluding splinters and thorns. Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Yehuda expands the Ribu Miyut, the Ribu, and includes even splinters, thorns, needles, excludes only one, what cannot be taken in hand. The answer, and generally expounds a prat klau, a klau prat klau. However, he also follows the opinion of the Tan of the Bay Rabbi Shmuel. They hold when two generalizations precede a specification, a Ribu Miyut Ribu is expounded. For example, Zet Tachlumi Kol Asher Bamayim, Kol Asher Yeshlo Snapira Kaskeses Bamayim. One can eat sea creatures. Found in water with fins and scales in water, Bamayim includes any body of water, even ditches and cisterns. Bayami Munchalim limits it to natural bodies of water. When the arrangement of terms is klau klau prat, it indicates expound the verse differently, exclude sea creatures that develop in cisterns. However, this special arrangement of terms is not present in Shvuas verses. Therefore, Rebbe cannot hold Stein Shein Arba relating to past oath. It follows only Rebbe Yekibu, who generally expounds Ribui Miyotu Ribui. If you're enjoying Daphne 5, Please click on the link below, subscribe, and become a sponsor. Thank you.